Good evening and thanks for joining us. Welcome inside the Langley Event Center. It is the Canada West Final. Trinity Western Spartans playing host to the Alberta Golden Bears. For sure there's pressure to perform. No one else in the country has the pressure of being back-to-back -back champions. We're just chasing the best version of ourselves. Schreiber out of the back row is Eric Lepke. We try to play in a way that we don't need the end product to justify the process. Bergen gets underneath that one. Carter Bergen trying to rally the troops. Pressure is a privilege, as uh, Coach Benjo says, so we've gotten really good at embracing it. Blocked by Pearson Eschenko. When we are successful as we have been the past two years, when you have players as good as we do in the country, there's going to be pressure. We want to play to the level high enough that can win us a national championship. Now Schreimer over to Elser, sends that at a good angle. Schreimer, Canada West Player of the Year. Winning the national championship would be the perfect end. Josephson's career, he's been named both Canada West Coach of the Year and U Sports Coach of the Year twice. If we're good enough, there's literally nothing you can do to stop us. We just got to be good enough. The fans in the LEC rising to their feet. Ball over to Schreimer and Lepke. champions for a third year in a row, the Trinity Western Spartans. The Spartans Canada West champions for a third year in a row. They are heading to Nationals with momentum, a four-set win over the Golden Bears. The fact that we are going to Nationals, that's the, the exhale. Because now we get to reset and, and mission accomplished. We're in that tournament, we got to put together three good days. This season really is the start of a whole new cycle. So this was supposed to be year three of a, a three-year window, but with uh, Blake Shearhorn leaving early and Aaron Betcher having a season-ending injury. This team that we had constructed for this year doesn't exist. As much as you try to plan it out, it doesn't always play out. And that's, uh, that kind of hasn't been easy. Just the confidence of coming in as the Canada West champ is a, that's a big thing because you got all week long to let that kind of settle in. And uh, sure, it hypes you up a little bit, but these guys are already hyped up. Like we have four players in the floor that returning from last year's group, and nobody else in the country has won a national title on the floor. Yeah, tick one thing off the goal sequence and already have a banner on the ready to go up. But to win nationals is three epic nights in a row, and we know what it takes to win that game, and we got guys who can get us there. Okay, we're going to play service team lines for a little bit. Uh, first ball, reception, left side to then high ball. Well, the way we've kind of built our model up is guys in their third year, we expect them to kind of, that's their year to step onto the floor and start really contributing in a mean, meaningful way. Again, life happens, teams change year to year. Now we're playing a couple of rookies out there. Everybody who's going to score a point for us really has no business being in the roles they're in when it comes to like the plan and our two best out left spike spikers are first and second year. So we need these young guys to play way above their, their experience level. And so, I mean, we're starting Jesse Elser and Jackson Howe in their first year, and we've really wanted to never be there. Uh, I'm Jesse Elser, I play left side. The Spartans and Jesse Elser with the finish on that. Jackson Howe, um, I'm a middle blocker. Schreimer over to Jackson Howe, drops that in. Eric had to start last year because of some other things. I think he's shown a ton of maturity in the role we've asked him. He's going to be the focal point of everyone's game plan. He needs to be our best liker every game because that's just the role that's been thrust upon him. My name's Eric Lepke. My position is an outside attacker. And Lepke sends that at a sharp angle. The fact that we're doing as well as we are this year is a little bit surprising. To be honest, I'm freaking out. The fact that we're about to make a run in the playoffs. But one thing leads to another and we're playing all these young punks and they're in position. To, uh, to make that run. Getting up there now, Schreiber back over to Lefty. Two blockers up and the Spartans make the best of it. 
Thank goodness for guys like Carter and Adam who have that veteran leadership. I'm Adam. I'm a fifth year setter on the team. Side will Schreiber go back there? No. Quick in the middle over to Pearson and Shanko. My name's Carter Bergen. I'm a libero and so I'm a defensive specialist, I guess some, some people call it. Carter Bergen over to Schreiber. Yes. But the gap between expectation and reality is the greatest challenge. The fact that we are the two time defending champs. These kids all came to this program to have a chance to host these matches and play for banners. Schreiber set from the back row. There's Lefke looking for kill number two. I think it's an opportunity to make history and I think three is three something different, three is something, uh, something special. The possibility of winning a national championship is pretty cool, so for sure a lot of excitement. Perfect ending, Adam gets player of the year, we win Can West and Nationals. It's a lot different than we'd expected, but winning the national championship would be the perfect ending. <laughs> Wait, this, is, this isn't them in front of us? <laughs> no. After 20 minutes? <laughs> I feel, you can tell you can see his hair flailing <laughs> behind the scenes. He had his hair uh, uh, slicked back in a hat and it actually looked like, look, look like cooler. I I thought it looked better than the middle part. Can't wait to that hill. Joel to watch this part and just be like, Joel got a top they hate my hair? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, traveling is like one of the reasons I play on the team. Like I have so much fun every uh, road trip. Like. I don't know, there's 20 people in line at Tim's and then we end up almost getting kicked out because this guy did something funny and then uh, we end up watching movies together on the plane. Like the uh, traveling is one of my, my uh, highlights actually because very rarely ever in life do you get to be with your 20 best friends at one time. Traveling cross country, it's, it's pretty sweet. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jack. Oh, thank you. Oh, how embarrassed. I told them it's Jackson's birthday. It's not Jackson's birthday. <laughs> we uh, we try and keep the atmosphere light. <laughs> yeah. Is anyone good? Um, Eric's pretty good. Um, Adam's okay. Other than that, no. <laughs> I think if we're not goofy too, it's kind of like these trips are way less enjoyable. Yeah. Because if we're all uptight, like you it's just like no out? fun. The more uptight you are, the more you worry about things and the games and stuff like that like it's just the easiest way to stay loose is cracking jokes yeah. <laughs> how do you feel now huh <laughs> i think it's really fun uh aaron and i don't get to travel that much during the year because we're injured um so a few times we do get to travel it's really enjoyable so you look like you're surprised it was your birthday <laughs> <laughs> I was really nervous. I didn't eat a lot just because I knew I could maybe be going up. Obviously, I didn't know if I was going to win. In the 2017-2018 Most Outstanding Player in Youth Sports Men Volleyball goes to Adam Schreiber. Yeah. My goal was never to win a Player of the Year. Um, my goal is to get better. Right, try and do whatever I can to help this team. It's cool to be recognized, but I mean, nothing really changes. What I, all season long, I was just trying to do my job. And I guess I did a good job at that. <laughs> I don't know. Right now, I'm really focused on tournament and stuff like that. I'm sure when I'm a lot older, uh, when I kind of look back at my career, I'll enjoy it a little more, maybe. Who knows? Maybe not. But um, yeah. Is this being your last year? Does it feel different? Um, yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's different. I I know that next next fall I won't be coming back to the team, um, and that's sad. But it's exciting too, because um, I don't I don't know what's gonna happen next year. But 
Um, I think this team will be just fine without me. There's been amazing players who have come through this program and the team has just moved on. Ben creates such a culture, he prepares everyone um, for what they need for every situation they'll be in. I'm just another guy coming through this program and we got other players who will come in and play the same position as me. I'm really excited to follow the team next year um, and watch them play because everyone who follows volleyball in this country knows that they're going to be a really good team next year. Are you ready to not be a part of the team next year? Um, I don't know. I guess I'll realize, I'll figure that out um, when I actually am gone. Um, I think I'll try to prepare myself as best I can. Um, but, um, yeah. I don't know. I'm going to miss these guys for sure. I'm going to miss this coaching staff, everything about this team, this school. So whether or not I'm ready to move on, I just kind of know that I've, been, I've had a great five years here. How are the boys looking, Joel? Pretty good. Good morning. Did, did you know Eric's not here? No. Ooh. In bed sick. Sick. Good. A third of your starting lineup. Not feeling so hot. <laughs> That's tough. All both high volume volume guys. It'll be fun. Business as usual. Next guy up. Spend all year together in the gym it makes it, it makes it fun. So we've got guys that can play. And you can see their their attitude hasn't changed at all. It's, it's, it's work. Let's go to work. You feel okay? Please. What are you in here? Yeah. Maybe maybe you are sweating because it's so hot. Maybe Eric's trying to sweat out all the bad stuff, dude. Yes. Yeah, How do you feel? I'm really cold in here. You feel cold? Yeah. See. Yes, two calories here. Yeah. Drink up. Are you playing? I'm gonna try. Yeah? Yeah. If not, you just know who you got back in the end. I know. Have you seen my left? <laughs> <laughs> Have you talked to Ben about it? No. Okay. okay. I started feeling weird about halfway through when we switched into the main venue at practice. On I just kind of had this like weird feeling. I didn't know if it was nerves or just, yeah, if it was a little cold, but I kind of had this headache. Kept getting worse and worse, started getting chills. I, like it hit me so fast. It was it was kind of scary. Perfect. Good, how close are you to the hotel? The Sheraton. Okay, okay, never mind. Uh, I just need to go to the clinic. The walk, and I got a sign. Right up here on the right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I got off the spectrum. Yeah, oh, you do? Yeah, we, we were talking. I should, if they should try to ramp me up for tonight or not. Um, and A thought it wasn't a good idea to try tonight. It's because I've been getting worse and worse and after Alex doesn't kicked in yet. He was afraid if he would have tried tonight, it could have just put me totally over the edge. Yeah. And I'd be done for the rest of the games. It's just not worth it. Yeah. Hopefully he can win tonight. Oh, I'll be so heartbroken if we don't win tonight. And the boys are gonna win tonight. Yeah, I know they will. They're gonna win. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome inside the Burridge Gymnasium at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario. We are mere minutes away from opening serve in what is the 52nd U Sports Men's Volleyball National Championship. So interestingly enough, um, Eric Lefty not starting in this match. This next man up is kind of something we always talk about. Quarterfinals are always very weird. And you've only seen them on video, so it's really tough playing against someone when you've only seen a few hours of tape on them. So 
inside Johnson. And Johnson cross court finds the sideline. Is the advantage here for Windsor. And Bouchard with the kill. So Trinity not quite firing on all cylinders yet here early on. Like, just they're doing the dumbest stuff. We went to the corner, it's got to be high side high ball. Yeah, he said he knew. Every error now that you make, it compounds a little bit here. And now we have a set point opportunity here for Windsor. Back row, and that ball goes long. And with that, the Lancers take the opening set 25 to 22. That's just a really nervy, weird start. I mean, the only way to combat that is you gotta talk and get out of your eyes. You overthought everything. They didn't play the right spot on defense. Jordy didn't even remember what I told him to serve. Like, everybody was going a little bit crazy. Take a deep breath. We got two and a half hours of this we talked about. You have to change the intensity. You're thinking and not playing. All right, boys, come on. Come on. Let's do it. One, two, boys. Hey, real quick. Or two. All right, everybody, welcome back inside the Burge Gymnasium here. After that first set, it was 25-22 for Windsor. Windsor coming in and giving the number one team in the country a great push. Kern, Elser, nice pass. Schreimer, middle, Ashenko. Spartans coming out firing here after the first set loss, already up 4-1. Bouchard, tough serve, outside, Lewin, power tip. And on the 60 run there, Pearson, Ashenko. Jackson Howe, how about that for Showing what you could do. Yeah, you want to put that one on the highlight reel there, probably. Anyone who watched that game was kind of knew we were in ourselves. As soon as we kind of got into our rhythm, playing comfortable, kind of trusting each other, uh, you could tell we were feeling a lot better, playing, playing much better. Can't lie. Ben Lewin, no doubt about that one, though, comes back cross court and gets the kill. The receive of Windsor breaking down here a little bit. Oh, nice diving stay there from Kern. A one-handed set from Schreimer. Puts it down with the left hand. Schreimer, back row, Kern. And Kern off the block and down. And we now have a match point opportunity here for the Spartans by Elser. Schreimer, middle to Ashenko, and that will do it. Journey Western takes this quarterfinal three sets to one and advances to face the McMaster Marauders. Knew that if we played our game, if we played well, um, we would be successful. And Kind of, we went away from that the first set. We were nerves, whatever it was. Um, and then once we got back to kind of playing our style of volleyball, we were much better. And then we were kind of ready to move on. Really, really proud of you guys. Those quarterfinals aren't easy. Now we get to line up against Mac. Full pack, Jim. Let's make sure that we got our best coming tomorrow. Proud of you. Love you. Be good. Who, who is it? Yeah. Well done. I know. <laughs> Every time we're here, they pack the defensive stands up. So we love playing against people. Like when we played Mac in the quarterfinal in 2007, the whole football team was letting us know. It was intense. And we barely got through that one. Like, but whenever there's that many fans for a collegiate athlete playing volleyball, that's pretty rare to get that many people fired up to watch us play. And I think that's the dream. It's that you're playing on the biggest stage with people who are fired up to watch the game and, and a quality opponent to test yourself against. Like that's the dream. So. I like to think that our group craves that level of competition. I like to think that our group thrives on that. So I think that's why we play well here because they have a great fan base. They cheer hard against you. The opponents are awesome at the national tournament. And whole, I think that brings the best out of us. What was it like watching? Way worse than not being able, like way worse than playing. Um, especially because it's not like I'm like in a different city, like you guys are like 20 minutes away from me. I'm just sitting in a hotel room watching. Like I was hanging out with these guys like three hours before. Um, and knowing that like I could maybe have played or um, like, like obviously feeling the guilt of not being healthy, even though I know there's nothing I could have done. But especially like after the first set, I was kind of like freaking out. Like this isn't happening. Like 
this would just be the worst thing. But they pulled it together, and obviously, yeah. yeah. He's alive. He's alive. Guy, you don't look dead. Take a look at the alignments. We're gonna fly through these guys. You know these guys so well. I know it's gonna be freaky in there tonight. We're we're not gonna be able to hear each other. It's gonna be that loud. Yeah, I heard the stories from Nationals two years ago. How loud it was and how crazy it was, and I couldn't sleep. And like I've never had that before. So that was a big like shot to the face. Like oh my goodness. Like we're used to loud gyms. Like we we look forward to not being able to hear each other, to having to yell in each in each other's ears, and still not having a hope of hearing what they say. So like it's not the volume. We actually look forward to that. Yeah. One two. Five. Yeah, one, ten minutes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I feel pretty good about tonight. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Great eight. I played this count. Did that tell me you were sick in the U17? Yeah. Yeah. You killed it. I could remember. Yeah, you were sick. Yeah. All right. So we'll keep in touch with you. And then I like, it like feels like I like pull my thumb to like get it back in. I'm not sure if that makes any sense. It kind of feels like, yeah. Now here is the best in the business. You know what, we've debated amputation for a while now, but I don't know, the prosthetic kind of looks nice, so maybe. We could turn the prosthetic into a brick and I could hit it way harder. I'll be a left side next year if I get a brick on my wrist. We'll consider it. Oh. Yeah. Pretty neat. That analogy we talked about earlier, this is their zoo, this is their cage, this is their land. And when you're going to invade someone else's land, you better have your ducks in a row, you better have each other's backs covered, and you better fight like crazy because there's no escaping if you're not all together. We're in hostile territory, it's just us. We got guys who were injured, we got guys who were sick, we got guys who were nervous, we got guys who were distracted, we got guys who were tired, we got guys who were, you name it. Volleyball is a very small part of this equation. We've talked all week about what it takes to win these games, it has nothing to do with volleyball. Managing nerves, managing pressure, and most importantly, making each other better. We've played almost 50 matches together this year. You guys know how to make each other better. And that's what we need. One, two, five. give the fans anything. I try to make it seem like I can't hear them. For sure, intimidated, for sure scared when you have thousands of people screaming against you, blowing those horns. Yeah, I'd be lying if I wasn't, if I was telling you I wasn't scared. Oh man, the crowd, something I've, I've never experienced before. Like, on the bench, there's just like horns going, people yelling, it's really distracting. So I'm Jared Brown, Tom McCabe with me on the call. We're ready to go, this should be a beauty. And it's Swan gets the block on Kern. Coming out of the back row is Richards on the pipe. McMaster is firing on all cylinders. You know, I'm just watching the timeout here with Coach Josephs and Tom, and a very animated timeout, but lots of instruction here. We gotta simplify. Get the ball off the net so we can set somebody. Passers, let's go. Doty outside, Coppers. 
right over top of Kern and, and everything working right now for Matt as they are one point away from taking this opening set. It's not a great set. Richards goes up with the joust and somehow squeezes it through Schreiber. And Mack takes the opener 25-18 and leads this first semifinal one set to none. And that's the dream start there for Mack. Listen, passers, you got to move your feet. We got a free ball, no one moves their feet. You got to play some ball, elevate the pass, make sets. Passers, you got to get your game going or we're losing three bucks. It's on the receivers now. Suck it up. Step up to the plate and get a change done. There's nothing emotionally or mentally that we can do to help you. You're awesome passers. You just gotta go out there and pass the ball. Simple stuff, fellas. You gotta make a change though. We're in for a long night, but you need to make a change to make it happen. Let's go now! You could just see they were visibly rattled and Jesse's so, so honest with his feelings. He's like, yeah, I couldn't even think. And Jax was like, man, the lights were bright out there. Like you could just see that their senses were overactivated. The other one is make sure everybody keeps the nice loose feet, early arms. Loose feet, early arms. Jump float taken there by Elser. Schreimer outside, Kern, and Kern uses the hands. Kennedy's offense kind of starting to come alive a little bit. Hit right in front of us, and boy, you can feel the power on that one as he just destroyed that cross court. That's good. We got good rhythm now. Now we got to compete. Okay, good. Keep the service pressure alive. Put it on coppers for a bit. You see something like that, how are you going to stop that? Elser absolutely tattoos that one. That's his hardest hit of the game. Lepke with the second pipe early on in this set, and that looks just almost unstoppable. They want more. They want a fifth set for Mack. Let's see what can happen. Ashenko goes after Pereira again, passed off the net. Coppers, high ball outside to Richards, and Richards hits it long, and it's out of bounds. Trinity Western will advance to the final try to win their third straight national championship. semi-final and even the national final thing that we get to do with our best friends and that no matter what happens you still love us the same I pray that we can rest up and play a great game tomorrow Let's just say amen right. 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 one two three right. when the horns are going it's really loud we really have to get close to hear coach and there's a couple of timeouts I had no idea what coach said yeah. I was kind of like tried to read his lips and afterwards I just tried to hug someone <laughs> like I had no idea what was happening and like, like the more you yell, like the sweatier you get, and the sweatier you are, the harder it is to play too. Like I, like Adam had some tough times setting some of my passes because my arms were so wet, and I had tough time passing. So I tried not to yell at times. So it was, so that's like that's something that the noise does is that it makes us yell more too. They were awesome tonight in the first set. Both serves were tough. They're hitting everything. Um, and yesterday was pretty nervy. I thought. So first yeah. game of the tournament, playing a team you've never seen. Don't know. Yeah, I thought like the the collapses like might have looked similar, but like yesterday was nerves and and like today, they they just played like they played special in the in the first. So like I didn't even think that was us playing bad. Like those floats are moving a foot in the last six six feet from my right seam and my left seam, and we're all sweaty. And like like there's still some nerves, but I thought that was a completely different lapse in the in the, in the first sets. Is there anyone you don't want to see? UBC. But I would make for the best final. They're the best team in the tournament. So, and we can't play the home team in the final, so UBC is the best team to beat in the final. If I had beaten the Bears for one banner, it'd be fun to beat them for another. They're the best team, so that's the way it's supposed to be. Sport, you want to be the best, you got to beat the best, and I want to see those guys get through. And if we can beat the Birds, then undisputedly we are the best team in the country because we beat the other three best teams in the country. And if we're not good enough, then we don't win. And that's what the national championship's all about. We're either good enough or you're not. You are what your record is, you are what the medal says you are, and that's what we'll finish. And I really hope it's gold, but we'll see. Let's see if someone's good enough to beat us.
Let's wake up. No. I've been up since uh, like 4.45. But I, uh, I just had like a 30 minute nap. I woke up for like, like four hours. What? I just couldn't sleep, yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I woke up in the middle of the night at like five for like an hour and just like thought about the game for like the longest time. And I was like wide awake, like already nervous. <laughs> My mind is racing on way. All of us were saying like some guys had trouble falling asleep. Some guys yeah. were like, uh, like I personally, I Waking woke up, up I woke up at like seven, and my alarm was set for nine thirty, and I couldn't, right. I couldn't sleep. I think it's best not to think about like what would happen if you won, won or lost. It's best just to kind of like enjoy the process, and then winning kind of takes care of itself. So. Are you coming for your video? Yeah. What's the time right now? It's two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah. I should go over this morning too. I don't know. I don't shave and cream, so I'm eating body lotion. A little bit different, obviously, than the last time we played. Um, not a ton. I don't think there's a ton of things to change. They're not a whole lot different. There's a few volume things that have changed. There's a couple serving tactics that we've adjusted. Um, like there's last year, last game plan sheet with some of the modifications. <coughs> so what you have is the updates, but it's not a ton. You should see a regular one that gets marked up. When the ball is in play, I believe we're the better volleyball team. I believe we're better in block defense. I believe we're better offensively. We just got to keep the ball in play. Back in September, like people could have guessed that that would have been the national final. I don't remember the last time it's been like two teams from the same province in the national final. So yeah, it's BNBC or UBC. Like we don't want to lose to those guys. Like, like it can't be those guys, you know. Like we have a long history with them. Like it's always Spartans, Bears, and Birds. And so uh, like uh, Spartan and Birds is a classic mashup. It's just more of a rivalry than we have with Max. So they're not more intimidating. There's just maybe more, more personal, I guess. A lot of nerves. There were, other than a slip up to Brandon at the start of the semester, they were only loss and it was like a real loss. So I think a lot of people were nervous. A lot of, a lot of us would have rather had U of A, but a lot of people were excited too because it's a battle of two best teams in BC. So not even just Ken West, but BC in general. You get to play the last day. That's what we set out to do day one. We want to be playing on the last day. The whole volleyball world getting the chance to enjoy your hard work, your preparation, to showcase what makes our team and our program special. One, two, three. <laughs> My goal is to make sure we show up, we prepare, we formulate, we execute, and we, we lay it out. And if we get beat, man, we'll keep our heads up. If we don't, that's something we're going to have to address and why. And, uh, but at the end of the day, I just really want the kids to play free and play for each other. And I think it's going to be enough. I really do. But if it's not, at least if they lay it out there, we'll, we know what we got to do. Super pumped that our last game is this game. It's going to be sad no matter what, because we got one more game together. This has nothing to do with volleyball tonight. Just be the best you can for your teammate, and he'll do the same for you, and so on and so forth. I love that we get to play this game as our last one together. This team. That's one more chance to enjoy each other on the court. So let's make sure that's what it is, though. And if you have a doubt, just look each other in the eye. If you have confidence, look each other in the eye. And make sure that that look just shares joy. One, two, sports! Here you good.
We are mere minutes away from opening serve in what is the 52nd U Sports Men's Volleyball National Championship. UBC, Trinity Western, the all British Columbia battle. One game left in the year. The winner will be your U Sports National Champion. A lot on the line in terms of some history behind both of these teams going for this gold medal. If UBC can really get rolling, it's going to make things difficult for Trinity Western. Lepke leading the charge on offense for Trinity Western. Katarakis with the dump. This is a match of pure power. Lepke goes up against three guys, but isn't able to get it through. Kern out of the back row, and this time it's Brar who gets the stuff blocked. And so that serve goes long, 25-22. UBC takes the opener and now leads one set to none. Medals, you guys got to get your hands down. They're just teeing off low. Same thing, high line. We got to go low line press. If they skip hands, they got to be out of bounds or slow down. And we got to get some digs in those cross court balls. I know they're hard, but right now we're getting no result on our serve. Hey, we're here now. Hey, we're here now. Here we go. One, two, one. There's nothing. There's nothing to adjust to. Just play. And Elser is blocked, and then gets called on two hits. Middle to the Shane and. The Shane converts. And that ball goes off the arms of Elser into the back wall. Coach Josephson will call timeout. Not looking too pleased. Cover like crazy. Gotta make a stop. You gotta convert the one. You gotta stay with it now. You gotta believe all the way through. Do everything right and make each other better now. Come on, one more, one more side out. Let's go. Now Trini Western just doesn't have an answer, and UBC is just playing at a level that Trinity can't get into that gear that they're used to being in. But that one into the net. And 25 to 18, UBC takes the second set and now are one set away from claiming their first national championship since 1983. Blockers, like that last ball that Keith, hey, that last ball Keith hit, that was pure team. We gotta make sure we're cutting those balls off, okay? If it's a chance, it starts slow, but it builds fast. Make sure we're good inside out. One, two, one. Third time's a charm for the Trinity Western block as Lepke gets a big one on Brar. Joel Regeer, now Regeer goes back to serve, handled by Bergen, outside. Lepke one on one. Nice kill there by Lepke. Ketarakis to West. Schreimer blocked, and Brar caught deep, but he does get the save. Now it's tight, West. Power tip, dug up there by Lepke. They go all the outside to Elser, and then Brar with another diving dig. Ketarakis 60 to Regeer, tipped over. Bergen diving save, Schreimer on the run, puts it back to the UBC side. Ketarakis back to McCarthy. Soft block, kept the lie, what a cover. West goes up and hits it off the hands. Oh, considering the circumstances, maybe the biggest rally of the day, 23. 23. Schreimer pushed past the pin and Elser blocked by McCarthy and Regeer. And somehow out of nowhere, Tom, we have championship point. We've got championship point here. The crowd on their feet. Everybody standing here at the Burridge Gymnasium. Gold medal point, championship point to Shane Sir clips the tape and it's up, kept alive. Oh my goodness, what a rally. Ketarakis back to McCarthy and he's stuck blocked by Elser. Oh man, we're literally inches, Tom, centimeters, millimeters away from UBC claiming gold and a diving save to keep it alive. Taken there by Smith, outside to West. West, play continues off the block to go West again and he hits it into the aerial. And now we have a set point for Trinity. What a finish we are surely in for. Shenko serve, pass there by Brar. Ketarakis, high ball, West. Off the block and down, side out UBC. We're back to Deuce. Everybody's standing, nobody's sitting here. And he gets a service ace as it goes off the left and out of bounds. And now once again, we have championship point. There's no timeouts left. This one has to be played out. Puts the serve in play, pass by Bergen, it's tight. West puts it down, and for the first time since 1983, and the fourth time in program history, the UBC Thunderbirds are your new sports national championship. The T-Birds take it in Hamilton. Wow, just pure joy you can see from the UBC Thunderbirds.
What a tournament they've had. We talked about it. I just remember turning to Adam and um, yeah, he starts crying and we all just like hug him because we all wanted to win so bad for Adam, I think. Yeah, obviously we wanted to win, but um, I think it just shows how much we care about each other, so. Uh, I was really upset and really frustrated with the result of that game. Uh, no team has won three in a row since it was like the 60s or 70s. Um, and Ben told me that no setter has ever won three championships. So I was kind of setting out for something that has never been done before. And I failed. As a leader of the team, not having your best game on the last game of the season, that, that weighs heavy on you. And right after that last whistle blew, it weighed pretty heavy on me. got beat. That was the first time we got beat in a long time. Um, you know, we've known those guys were good. They've, uh, they've been good for a long time and now they're, this is their year. They're all seniors. They're all hyped up and yeah, they came in to kick us in the butt pretty good. That's, uh, that doesn't happen often to this team. Uh, I think it was a success. I don't really like, we lost, but like I had one of the funnest years playing volleyball I've ever had. I don't know. We got like sec We were like one game away. I don't think there's anything to be mad about that. And like just getting there and how with how young our team was and um, just the way we play, the way we care about each other. I think, yeah. I don't think it can be a failure. The way we look at it. I think that was that was a special season. I think not a lot of people knew how young we were. I think I think I heard it said we were the youngest team to play in the national final. Like we. Um, we had won the last two, but we lost, I think, like five stars in the past two years. Like we, we lost, uh, we lost two of our outsides. We lost our two middles, and um, like just out of all the guys we've we've lost, I think everybody thinks like they're the Spartans. Like they, they're expected to win this. Like we're 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 young, and what we did with our personnel, I think, is pretty special. Um, so right now I'm planning to play professional volleyball um, overseas somewhere, probably in Europe. It's exciting, but it's, it's scary for sure. Um, I'm going to be moving to a country uh, that speaks a language that I don't know. I don't know any other languages. Um, and yeah, there's a chance I could be playing with some, someone or a whole team that I've never played with, never met before. And that's so different to what I'm used to here. Right? I know everyone that's coming in, everyone that's leaving, all my teammates here. Um, so yeah, it's just going to be very different, right? Playing for a coach I haven't played for before, living in a new country, um, yeah, teammates I never played with. So it's, it's exciting for sure, but on the other hand, right, I'm leaving all my friends, right, leaving everyone here, leaving my family, and it's just, um, yeah, it's scary, but exciting also. I was in a hotel room with uh, Kern and Eric, and like we were, we were talking about how this is the leadership crew for next year, and we we know what it is and we know what we have to do and so we talked about either changes we want to make or things we want to make clear and kind of points we want everybody to know going into games and stuff so yeah we we have had some talks about the future yeah who's winning next year hmm. i want to say we are but i also don't want to you know jinx anything <laughs> their coach carry designed their offense and the way they go about the game to beat us. Their plan is to beat us, just like our plan. We've had plans in the past to beat those people who are at the top. We're at the top, so everyone's plan is gonna, gonna be to beat us, and they found what works the best, and then ultimately it worked in the end, but now it just leads us to get back to the drawing board and see how we can beat them.